In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using a roundover tool within Carveco. Now I'm doing something quite basic here. I just want to create a radius on the corner of this part, as you can see here. Now I found a roundover bit in our workshop, but I can't really find much information about it. So I found this website here and it looks pretty much the same sort of roundover, but I can see that this is for a hand router. I know that the radius is 6.35, so it's a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to try to use that to create a roundover bit in Carveco Maker. So let's open up Carveco Maker and you can see that I've created this design. So if I zoom in, you can see that I've got this vector going around the outside. So this is going to basically be the path for the round over to follow. And then I've also got these two closed profiles, which is going to be the cutout profile. So first of all, let's set up the round over tool. So if I go to my tool database and you can see here, I've got everything closed. Let's add a tool. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come down to tool type and let's find round over tool. So if I click that and then description, let's say, like so and the tool units are going to be in millimeters for this one because i've got a millimeter tool i'll do the right units in inches a minute so the diameter for this so this is the overall diameter of the round over bit so if we take a look you can see d the diameter is 28 millimeters So enter that. Now this diameter has to be quite accurate. You'll see why later in the video, but that, that diameter needs to be accurate because it sort of works out the offset for you. So the arc radius, so that's the radius of the round over is 6.35 quarter of an inch. Now it automatically works out what the inner diameter is. So what this diameter is here, it automatically works that out once you put those two figures in there. So the step down, let's say that I always want to do this in two cuts. So I'm going to do a step down of say four. Now you have relative offset here and you have relative to inner and you have final tool offset. I'll explain what all of those do in a moment. For now, let's just enter a step over, let's say 40%. Spindle speed, I'll say 18,000. Feed rate, let's say 75 and a 50 for the plunge. Now I'm not too fussed about the plunge because I'm always going to make sure that I plunge outside the material because I haven't got no cutting edges on the bottom here. So I'm going to make sure that I plunge over here, which is off the material. So I haven't selected anything for relative offset, relative to inner or can't change the final tool offset anyway so I've just left that so select OK and there you have your round over tool so I'm going to select OK for that again and then I can start doing my tool paths so I'm going to show you how to do this so if I go to create a profile tool path and select the path that I want it to follow I'm going to do this on the outside to begin with. The finish depth, you want that to go the radius, unless you want a step in the top. So if you do want a step in the top, then you go a bit deeper. But I just want a nice radius on this. So 6.35, quarter of an inch. Select a tool. So my round over tool, click select. And I'm not going to add any lead in ramping or bridges or anything like that. And then select calculate now. 
and you can see it creates a tool path around the outside. So if I were to simulate that and then rotate around, you can see that it's given me the form of the round over tool. I'm going to delete that and let's rename this to be round over, just so I know what that is. Now what you need to do is cut the part out. And this is vital really within the software that you do this and you simulate it because this is where it shows up any errors. So if I select both of those, I'm going to go and do a profile toolpath. I'm going to go on the outside finish depth, 80 millimeters. That's my material thickness. The profiling tool, I'm going to go to Cadence Manufacturing and Design. I'm going to use a quarter inch Jenny compression tool. Click select. And I'm going to ramp this in. And I'm also going to add a couple of tabs. Let's say two millimeter by two millimeter, 2D. Let's just add them. I'm not too fussed about where they are, to be honest. And I'm going to select Calculate. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So let's simulate the round over. And then let's simulate the profile. So you can see that the profile has actually taken the round over out. So if I turn on the vectors, turn off the tool paths, you can see that the vectors actually come up to here, but the round over is actually happening past the vectors. So the profile is actually cutting the round over out. So that's not what we want. Now, there's a simple reason for this. I'll show you in a second. So if I delete the simulation, let's go back into the round over and I'm going to click select. I'm going to edit this tool. Now, the reason is that I haven't turned on relative to inner. At the moment, what it's doing is a final tool offset of 40 millimeters. So it's actually offsetting this by 40 millimeters. So it's not taking into consideration the radius on the corner. So it's not putting it in the right place. So if I click OK and then calculate again, let me just turn that off. You can see that what's happening is that the toolpath is too far out. And then when the profile comes, it just cuts it out. So if I now click calculate, what happens is it pushes it further inwards. So if I were to simulate these now, it should work. And then simulate that. And you can see that it's given me that round over. So that's all that you need to do. You need to really make certain that you get that tick box selected. Otherwise, it's not going to be in the correct position. Now, you can also move the radius if you want to. So if you wanted a bit of flat or you wanted just a little bit of the radius, you can move this. So if I were to move it, say, two millimeters, and then calculate again, delete the simulation. What this will do, it will move the radius a little bit further outwards. So if I simulate that, and then simulate this one, you should have less of a rad. So there you can see that I've got less of a rad on there. If I do it the opposite way, let's delete the simulation. And then let's select this again, edit that. And let's put a negative figure in there. It should leave you with a little bit of flat on there, which is two millimeters. So let's simulate all of these. And you can see it's left me with a little bit of flat. Okay, so let me put this back to zero and then calculate it again. And it should go back to the way that it was, which is 
pretty much perfect. Now, if I were to go a bit deeper, like I said, let's say that I were to do this nine millimeters. Let's delete that. You can see that I've got this sort of step in there. I don't want that though, but so let's go back to 6.35. Okay, so if I open up the round over tool again, you can do this on the outside or the inside. Now you can't do this a long. So if you set the round over tool to a long, it won't work because it doesn't know which way to offset so if i select to edit that this relative to inner and this final tool offset it basically offsets the tool so if you were to set the profile to be a lung it won't work because it doesn't know which way to offset the tool so it just doesn't do it so if i select okay and i go along i'll just show you what it actually does so if i delete that simulate all of these you can see it doesn't offset it so that's actually following the center line there and that's the center of the tool so you need to do this either set to inside if you want an inside round over or obviously outside for an outside right so let me set this back to outside and calculate just make sure that it works Okay, and I'm going to save this out and let's stick this on my desktop. I'll just call it round over and I'll save them to separate files and append the file details. Let's choose my post processor, which is a onefinity. And let's do it in millimeters, click save. So let's stick this on the machine and let's see what happens. So I've set my X, Y position in the bottom left corner. I know that the round over bit is going to actually plunge outside the material. And I've just set this up on the Onefinity controller. For the Z height, just move in somewhere in the middle of the material and just using the manual method with a piece of paper to set the Z height. So let's turn it on and let's see what it does. So you can see that it's plunging outside the material and then comes in does the first pass. plunges again and then the second pass and you can see it leaves you with quite a nice round over So that's done. Turn off the spindle. Keep my X and Y in the same position. And then I've switched to a quarter inch Jenny compression tool. And then I'm just setting up my Z manually again, just touching on the top with a piece of paper. Okay, so turn on the spindle and let's run this and cut it out. Now this is the moment where you find out whether your round over has been set up correctly.
Now, whilst machining this, I can see that the end mill has actually taken off quite a bit of the radius. So I'm thinking that there's something not set up right. Now, luckily enough, I've actually taped this down, not only clamped it down, and I also have the four tabs that are keeping it in place. So I'm going to go back into Carveco, try to find out what's going on with this and why it's not working properly. But before I do that, what I've done is put the round over tool back into the spindle because I'm going to use it again anyway. And I'm going to rerun that first tool path. I want to take a look at it and see how far away that actually is. Looking from the side, I can see that it's quite far away. It's at least a few millimeters missing. So there's definitely something wrong. So I'm going to go back into carve cut. Now, when I do the simulation, everything looks fine. So to me, that's making me think that there's some sort of user error. Uh, there's something that I've set up wrong. Now, the first thing that springs to mind is that I've set up the tool wrong. So let's go back into this round over and let's select the tool. Let's edit this tool. I'm pretty sure that the radius is a quarter of an inch or 6.35 because it actually says it on the side of the tool. So I'm pretty certain that that's okay. So the only other thing really that I can check is the diameter of the tool. So I've got a rule out and measured the diameter of that and it's nowhere near 28 millimeters. It's more like about 23 millimeters. So, I'm pretty sure that that's what the problem is. Now, if you take a look at this final tool offset, you can see that it's 7.65. If I change that to be 23, you can see that the final tool offset changes, which sort of makes sense because it's not machining in the correct position. So I'm going to select OK, click Select again, calculate it, Again, it should look exactly the same on the simulation. So let's save that out again and let's machine that and it should work this time. Now this is where you see it. So you can see that the chip's flying you can see that it's cutting and that looks pretty decent that looks pretty bang on so when i take it off the machine i'll let you see a little bit better close up so here you can see a side view of the round over and you can see that it's not bad you can see that it's pretty much the right sort of shape. And that's my finished product. So that's how you use a round over tool within CarveCode.